Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy hold. Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Bible Camp 2020. Uh, let's say our theme verse together with our motions, so please stand up if you're not standing up yet and say it with me. Together, connecting with God, 
people and creation. That's our theme for this year. I'm your speaker, Tom Itigachong of Nelson Mute. Fun fact about me, guess how many first cousins I have? Not 10, not 30, more than 50. I have 60 first cousins, and that's the truth. My dad is the oldest of 11. My mom is the oldest of 10. So with them being the oldest and with so many aunts and uncles and with them getting married and having kids, I've ad I added it up one time. The last time I checked, which was 20 years ago, we were at, I was at 61 first cousins. True story. How many cousins do you have? I bet some of you are pretty close to mine. Um, with me being the oldest, uh, one of the older cousins, though, that meant uh, me and my brother and my old, other older cousins, we had to do a lot of babysitting. So that was kind of like the bummer. Changing diapers when you're 10, 12 is not fun. Veteran diaper changer right here. That was not my favorite thing. Well, speaking of favorite things, uh, the other two days we said, what's your favorite thing about cabins? What you, what's your favorite thing about uh, camp activities? Today, what's your favorite thing about beach games at camp? Bucket ball, capture the flag, cat and mouse, caribou, caribou, is that one of them? My favorite has always been caribou, caribou. It's simple and it's fun. Now, I've only made it once to where I was like at the end and I was like the total winner. Other than that, I'm, I always got caught like super fast, become all this blob like and tagging everybody else on the beach. I wasn't a super good caribou, caribou player, but that was my favorite game. Hey, what kind of games can you do at your hometown? Even though you're not at camp, there's no reason you can't play camp games at home. Kind of a cool idea, huh? I have one camp story for you. Well, it was my first year at junior high camp, and camp was all over, but we had an extra evening there. There was just like 20 of us campers that got to stay, and so one of the staff people took me and five others, and we did something pretty cool. We got canoes, and we did the whole loop went back to the North River, and we camped at the sandbar or at the beach right next to the bridge. We had our sleeping bags, our pillows. We had a, a big tarp that we made a makeshift tent with, with our canoes being upside down. We slept on the rocks that night, and we did bridge jumping for like two hours. Uh, back in the day, we actually could do bridge jumping. That was actually one of the activities, but today I know, I know you can't do it today. It's one of my favorite memories about camp. Um, cool thing is that as soon as we started jumping off of the bridge, there was like this thunderstorm all around us, and we could see lightning crashing here, thundering over here. Super cool. Uh, hey, make sure you have your pen and your paper. Uh, today's third teaching is going to be from the Third theme, connecting with people. But before I read our Bible, Bible verse, I got a story about black bears and blueberries. I was the youth pastor at my hometown in Bethel for seven years. And one summer, our pastor said, let's go camping, let's go upriver, and let's pray and let's fast together and ask God what he wants for us to do this year. So we did. We were there for three days. The very first night, something crazy happened. Me and my friend Byron are in the tent. Byron's sleeping to my right. I'm in the middle. John is to my left. And I'm just fast asleep. Well, I get woken up to a gunshot. The gun, no joke, was about this far from me, super close. Turns out my friend Byron was to my right, shot at a bear through the tent, and he shot over me while I was sleeping. Isn't that crazy? Well, 
After we were all like super confused, like, what's going on? How come there's gunshots? Byron told us, there's a bear outside. And he shot the bear, but he couldn't find it. Thankfully, though, it was a black bear, and it was eating our friend John, who was sleeping next to me. He had picked blueberries that day and put them in a Ziploc bag, and he didn't close the Ziploc bag, and his blueberries were crushed. And those actually have a pretty strong smell. Some of my veteran blueberry pickers know what's going on. Mm -hmm. This black bear came next to our tent, smelled the berries, and just started, started eating. Well, that night, the moonlight was so bright, it was casting shadows. And since the Ziploc bag was right next to our tent, guess where that bear was? That bear was right next to our tent. And Byron said he could see the shadow of the bear through our tent, and he was so scared that he didn't even get out of the tent. He just shot right above me and John straight through the tent. Well, just like uh, our pastor wanted us to go camping to connect with each other, um, man, connecting with my friends and camping with them made our life exciting. Many of you guys know that camping is super duper uber fun. It's probably some of your favorite things to do. Camping is kind of boring if you're all by yourself. And I'll be honest, I'd never, ever, never go camping by myself. Ever. Camping is a lot of fun. It makes life exciting. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. And this verse actually tells us, just like camping is better with people, we're going to read about how life can be exciting when you live for God with each other. Let's read together. Hebrews 10, I'm going to read two verses, verses 24 and 25. It says this, Think of ways to encourage one another to outbursts of love and good deeds. It's kind of cool. Encourage one another with outbursts of love and good deeds. Let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of His coming again is drawing near. These two verses tell us that, boy, in order for life to be exciting as a follower of Jesus, you have to do something. You have to be together. And just like our first lesson, we were talking about how even though you might feel like you don't matter or maybe feel unimportant, you are super crucial because you are different. Well, this verse tells us here that uh, life is exciting when we're together with God's people. When you're encouraging them, like this version says, with outbursts of love, um, not neglecting to meet with each other, it's just a fancy way of saying, be together. Because you are crucial. You can help your friend. You can help your neighbor. If they're having a rough day, man, you can encourage them. You can lift them up. You can you know, go watch a movie together. You can go out on the beach. You can go out on the tundra. You can go look for eggs together to cook for at home. You know, My brother just brought me and my family some goose eggs. And I haven't had goose eggs for like years. And so when he gave them to me, my heart just was melting with joy. You know, and it's, a, it's kind of silly, you know. Adults can sometimes have so much joy, it makes them cry. <laughs> and I just, I didn't quite want to cry, but man, I was so happy he brought me some goose eggs. You can do that for someone else too. Simple acts of kindness, man, really do help each other. Uh, when you say something from your heart to your friends, Something that's true about them, man, it makes them feel really good, and it makes them feel like they matter. That's why you are important. Even though you might not feel like you are, you're crucial. And God made you different on purpose. Grab your pen and your paper, and I want you to write on top of your paper these, this phrase, connecting with people. That's our lesson for today. We have to be together and to stay together.
I love going to fish camp, but man, I do not want to go to fish camp like by myself. I love going to Bible camp, but man, I've been at Bible camp when it was just me and like another staff person just kind of roaming through cramp, camp looking for stuff people left behind. It's actually kind of an eerie silence when like there's nobody there. People matter. You know, camp's a great place to be, but it's you guys, every one of you. That's the reason we love camp, and it's the same. Have you ever been at your house all by yourself? Yeah, it's different. Like, as opposed to when your whole family's there, when your grandpa and grandma come over, your cousins come over, your best friends, man, your house is different simply because people are there. Connecting with people, that's what matters. And just like our first day, I want you to write this down. The church needs me. So go ahead and write that with me. Remember, you are essential. You are important. You matter, especially to your friends, to your mom or your dad, to your grandpa or grandma. Man, they can't imagine life without you. They love you. You're important. And if they think you're important, imagine how God thinks you are important. The church needs you. All right, let's write down our action steps. Remember, being a Christian, being somebody who follows Jesus, isn't simply about just going to church or having the right ideas and thoughts in your mind. Being a follower of Jesus means you have to do something. And that's what we're going to write down, your action steps. I want you to write down right next to the word action, these words, show Love. A lot of you have no problem whatsoever saying, I love you to your mom or your dad, you know, people that matter in your life, um, your cousins, your family members. It's so easy to say these words, I love you. But you have to show that you love somebody. You can't just say you love them and then not treat them right. That wouldn't make any sense. So more than saying you love somebody, I want you to start showing people that you love them. Second action step, how do you show love? You can be a good listener. And just like I said earlier, sometimes life is challenging. It's tough. Um, it's not easy. And sometimes your brother or sister even your mom or your dad, uh, your best friend, they just need somebody that wants to listen to them. And it helps. Just the other day, I was with my friend, and I just needed to tell him some stuff. And even though he didn't say anything, like to try to make me feel better, I just felt better just because I was able to talk to him. So you need to be a good listener. That's how you can show love. Action step number three. This is kind of an, um, an important one. Always say sorry. This is one way you can show love. You know, I'm not always right. You're not always right. Sometimes you get mad at your family, you know, your mom or your dad or your siblings, your brother and sister, even your teachers. But the way you can show love to people that matter in your life is to say sorry. And I know it's not easy sometimes, but it's really important for you to say that you're sorry. God loves it too. And when you can pray with your heart to him and say, God, I'm sorry for messing up today, God is so eager and ready to say, thank you for saying sorry. I forgive you. Important for you. Always say that you're sorry. Last one. I mentioned this already. Say nice things that are true. Sometimes we, we like to, uh, especially with our friends, you know, and especially if they're having a, t a tough day, 
Sometimes we'll say nice things, and sometimes those nice things aren't always true. And that's why I put that in there. You can't just say nice things just to try to sound nice. You should actually say nice things that are true about somebody. And when it is true to the person you're saying it to, it helps that much more. Remember, following Jesus isn't about having the right thoughts in your head and the right uh, ideas about God. It's not just about going to church. You have to do stuff. And what are you doing? You're learning how to show love by being a good listener, always saying sorry, and saying nice things that are true about somebody. Remember what Jesus said? He said, whatever you treasure, whatever you care for, whatever you love deeply, he said, that is where your heart will be. So let's say, um, let's recite together this with me. So I'm going to say it first, and you repeat after me. If people become my treasure, my heart will be for them. Let's say that one more time. If people become my treasure, my heart will be for them. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that we don't have to go through life alone. Lord, there are many times where a lot of us have really been truly alone, alone at home or walking through our village and town alone, um, alone at school when everybody, is, everybody else has gone. It's not a good feeling. But Lord, we are thankful that in the Bible you tell us that we should always be together with God's people because they need us to encourage them. The church needs me to help lead, to help show kindness, to help to show love. Lord, I ask that you would help each and one of uh, the people who are watching this video today, that they would truly be changed by you so that they can learn how to connect with people by showing them love and not just saying that they love them but showing them love lord thank you for being with us and thank you for teaching us we pray in jesus name and all the campers said amen I've got a river of life flowing out of me Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see Opens prison doors, set the captives free I've got a river of life flowing out of me Spring up, oh well, within my soul Spring up, oh well, make me whole Spring up, oh well Give to me that life abundantly. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, set the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, oh well, and give to me that life abundantly. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, set the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, oh well, and give to me that life abundantly that life abundantly